since I'm pretty sure that watching a video, me communicating to you through YouTube, counts as social distancing, I'll take my mask off. This is the, uh, this is the time of COVID-19 if you're watching this far in the future. So today, I'll be doing a quick test cut using a Forest Model 204. This is a standard machine. The interesting thing today is what we're cutting. This is a roll of polypropylene film wound on a pretty thick, hard cardboard core. Um, polypropylene is problematic because it's very hard and it has a relatively low melting point. So it makes it kind of a hard product to cut because if you get it wrong, you melt the polypropylene, it sticks to the blade and things just get all messed up. Um, we have cut it successfully before, um, but a thin wound film is a bit of a new challenge. It's also on a very thick hard cardboard core. The blade I'm using today is a one inch wide, three tooth per inch, hook tooth style carbon steel blade. I've got a tension at about 17, 18,000 PSI. My blade speed's about 3,000 feet per minute, which might actually be a bit fast for this. High blade speeds can contribute to melting. Paradoxically, low blade speed can also lead to melting, but we'll see what we get with 3,000. That's my usual do-it-all blade speed. This is a manual traverse table. The work piece is, I don't know, maybe 75 pounds or so. So for this, it's fine. Uh, the potential customer has much larger rolls of this stuff that he wants to work with. They would need a heavy style table or something else other than just a cantilever style table. So, I have not cut this material in this form before. I'm not sure how it's going to go. We will all find out together. Some melting. I'm in the core now. Be okay. We definitely did get some melting here. This is the drop piece. So the potential customer is worried about being able to unwind after cutting this stuff. You can see we did get some melting here, some ugh, hot nastiness. But this piece, the ends here were already fused. That's one of the problems they have is they can't unroll this. So I will see if I can unroll it. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to spin this roll around, cut the other end because it also has this melted edge problem and then see if I can unwind the remaining core. The cardboard core actually starts about here. That's why I'm cutting off so much, so I can make sure I cut both the polypropylene and the cardboard. Okay, second verse, same as the first. I think this build up here 
is actually from dust flowing all the way through the machine coming back down the top. So with, uh, if we pay some attention to dust collection, we can eliminate this. But now let's see if the remaining roll will unwind. Looks like this roll was split. It's unwinding reasonably well. Okay, it'll unroll. Just for giggles. I'll try a, um, what I call the sausage cut. This is not what this customer is trying to do with it, but I want to see if, it'll, if I can handle it. Do a longitudinal split. I do actually have customers ask for this exact treatment. They have rolls of material they want to feed into a reprocessor so they will chop it into lengths that they can digest and they'll split it long way down to the middle so they can just extract the core very easily. Oh, this stuff's a trip hazard. Okay, one more time. I think we're in good shape. So, the cardboard core. So it's not just automatically peeling off, there is a little bit of fusion here. And at the cut edges. Yeah, got a little bit of melting, a little bit of fusion at the cut surface. But, uh, peels apart relatively easily. So that is showing that it is possible to cut polypropylene um, on a bandsaw. If you have any questions, please feel free to call or email us at Forest Manufacturing. Thank you.